All right. Seriously not laughing this time at that. Okay. It's not funny anymore. It's not funny at all anymore. We threw it out way too long. (laughs) God damn it. All right. So we're covering the, we're doing a review of the Costa Rica um, versus USA friendly today or USA versus Costa Rican. That's probably how I should have said it. Anyhow, um, you know, it was a great game. We won. So what's there to talk about? We were actually going to do player ratings, but what's the point of that, Brett? I mean, outside, outside of a couple of players, I felt like most everybody got like A's. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's like all A's and then all the guys that got 20 minutes get at least a B. Um, and maybe Raina gets an extra, you know, A for the goal, even though he came in late. So, I mean, there's but, I mean, really... he didn't do anything wrong. So, I mean, he may have had an Aaron pass here or there, but. Yeah. I mean, I think I texted you during the game and I said, man, this Costa Rica team is totally unthu- unenthused, yeah. didn't want to be there, showed no they, heart. Yeah. They, they, they look they looked disinterested and lost against Honduras and they practically didn't even show up for this friendly. I mean, they, yeah. they weren't even on the pitch in the first half. U.S. had the run of the game. Yeah, then, I mean, this is generally yeah. the same starting lineup that this coach has used for three games in a row. So some of these guys might be just exhausted. They could be gassed, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So, I mean, we didn't do that. I mean, look at all our guys out there today where they were like fresh as daisies, you know. I think I texted that too. And, <laughs> no, I don't know where that that phrase comes from. I mean, lots of things are fresh, not just daisies. I'm but. sure there's a wiki page on it. But yeah, yeah no, if, you, if, you, if you look at if you look at our roster, our starting eleven, uh, I mean, it was a bunch of players who rested the entire Nations League. May have got bit minutes here and there, uh, so they are ready to roll. They're ready to make a name for themselves and uh, and show Burhalter that they're going to be competing for those starting spots. Yeah, I mean, outside of uh, McKenzie, who's played every game. Yeah, you know, I can understand him being tired, but then he got taken off in the fifth at, at halftime. So. Yeah. And what, um, what a what a re, what a rebound of a game too! Great I mean, game for him. Yeah. Great great pass through pass to DK for the goal. Um, pretty impressive all around. Then again, you know it was hard for me to get excited about the game because that Mexico game kind of hmm. um, you know it, it upped the level, and I I just find, found it a little bit harder. <laughs> To get into a friendly today, tonight, for whatever reason. <laughs> it was funny because uh, a Twitter was abound with a bunch of uh, tweets saying, we have a game today? You know, Twitter, <laughs> Twitter, Twitter was super quiet. There wasn't much of anything. I think every, everybody was just sort of like, not burnt out, but maybe burnt out in the sense that their emotions were just wiped after that Mexico game, that the fr- upcoming friendly was just sort of like a, okay, it's here, okay. Yeah, we'll it's watch one of, seven o'clock. It's seven o'clock, right? Okay, yeah, we'll watch it then. Yeah, it was, <laughs> yeah, it was kind of like wink, 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 wink. You know, it wasn't really uh, as exciting as that Mexico thing. So when you've just recently been at such a high, it's hard to like bring yourself up. I mean, don't get me wrong. I watched the whole game. I thought we played really well. I was really excited for Aronson, who I thought was yeah. a slayer of kid, men kid tonight. Was filthy. It was filthy. He was disgusting. Right, Luca. right there before halftime, he like he like dribbled like three defenders inside the box. Oh, no. oh my god, that was crazy. <laughs> I think he might have been surprised he got through one of them. He's like, oh shit, that I'll just, I'll just keep going. Fuck it, just keep going. <laughs> now, if that would end up being a goal, that would have been an iconic moment for him. Yeah, um, you know, but he had already scored early on, so he was already having a great game, mm-hmm. and. Um, We'll get to the Aronson dilemma in another show because there is a dilemma now, well, Brett. Well, what a, what, what, a ha- what a happy problem we have. I know because <laughs> you, you you literally can't play Aronson if you're going to start Pulisic and Reyna as your wingers. As your wingers, thank you for the, you defined the issue there. You know, not the and, issue, but the solu- possible solution. Uh, yeah, we can get into solutions in part two of this. Sure, but, sure, 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 sure. You know, honestly, it's Aaron's just Aaronson. You could stuff him into a different formation and it would work, but we'll get into that later. Well, you know, and Ty, and Ty brought up a, a great point that coming, come World Cup qualifying, come even a World Cup match, when you're playing and it's a tight game and you need that ball of energy off the off the bench, man. 
when when you have the opportunity of throwing Aronson in at the 55th, 60th minute and letting oh, yeah. him go to town on the team that's been running for 60 minutes or whatever. Oh, that yeah. that's, that's again just a phenomenal problem that we have in yeah, that on that in those two in those positions. Yeah, that's a real ball breaker yeah. for the other team when they got to go chase that kid around all over <laughs> the goddamn place. I mean, he's just he's just doing great. Yeah. And um so, you know, we're not going to do a player by player grading thing because as was said, you know, but there are some things to bring up. Musa mm-hmm. played finally and tight shirt also brought this up. Musa, according to the new FIFA rules, it came out this year. Apparently after four friendlies with an A team is now apparently capped. I did not know that. I have thought that we were going to bring that up in part two as well, but no, mm-hmm. that, that, that as new as of January, 2021, apparently. Uh, yeah. I didn't the thing. The, the funny thing is, is apparently nobody else understands the rule. But do do we want to talk about this further in the next part, or do we want to talk about this now? Yeah, we could we can talk about it in the next part. Okay. But it was just great to see Musa out there. Yeah. And uh, I thought Wea had a really good standout game. Sure, absolutely. I think DK could have scored two other goals. You know, on on a better day. He uh, had. He, let, well, he had what one. What was that one where he just watched the ball? What was that? <laughs> And you know what? Uh, even the announcers were taken aback by it. They're like, he must have been called off by somebody. I'm guessing maybe maybe a Costa Rican or something like that, because there's no reason that Robinson would have called him off because Robinson nope. was surprised that the ball even got to him. Yep. No, I don't think Anthony Robinson called him off. And I don't think Anthony Robinson ever calls off a strike, period. And, and not only that, but it wasn't that he just looked at it. He literally looked at it as it went across him. He could have easily have tapped that. Just, he almost crawled up to it and sniffed it. Yeah. It was, I mean, it was a what happened there? <laughs> I don't know. It's maybe just one of those major brain farts that happen. I have them sometimes. Um, you know, when you're in your car and you've just driven for 30 minutes, but you don't remember a single second you of it. You don't remember. Geez, I hope that light was r- a green. <laughs> <laughs> like you're just on fucking autopilot. Did I really just go through that roundabout? Oh, man. There's going to be a pile up there now. <laughs> So you would think that a striker like DK would just be like, anyhow, he'd be like, he all this, anything near me is yeah. mine. Stay yep. away from it. That's a, that should be the striker mentality. You're inside the box. That ball's anywhere near you. You're putting a foot on that. Somebody yeah. calls you off. You tell them to F off. So that pretty much DK did score. Seabatu mm-hmm. scored. The only person that in the series. Seabatu scored. Score. Seabatu scored against Honduras. The only okay, player, okay, okay. The only player that didn't score in this series of games is Sargent, and he played the most. So Sargent's got himself. He's he's dug himself a little bit of a hole here, not with Greg, but with the fans. I think going well, forward, as, as iconic as P Fox goal was and needed, um, yeah. there, I didn't see I didn't see a lot from P Fox outside of the goal to warrant a replacement of Sargent. I yeah. did see uh, enough from um, um, from DK to contend for that starting position. But let's also remember that we are also talking about a Costa Rican team that was phoning it in today. Oh, they absolutely. simply weren't there. But you know what? That's not DK's fault. He had some ups and some downs, more ups and downs. Let me, let me state that. And yeah. he scored. he scored a goal. Calm and collect. Uh, yeah, absolutely. He's, he's he's definitely contending for that starting spot. And I you can easily is, make the argument for that now. I think Greg was wrong not to bring him in the first place to Nations League. And I think he's the starter right now. He yeah. shows more life and energy. He runs the lanes better than both so, of them. Yes. So, I think he's, uh, yeah. he's the I, guy right now. One, one thing one thing I notice is even, even – even, no, in, in a game where we're playing against a team who's just not there – you can make these moves and still get into the attack. Um, DK was still pulling back far enough that I saw Wea and Aronson further up into the attack, similar to what I saw with Sargent and Pulisic and Reyna. Yeah. Um, so I almost wonder if that necessarily was a tactical move, but quite frankly, uh, again, uh, DK did that and still managed to get into the box He's and just became overall. a presence. So I mean, oh. I, I I think I think as a whole, I came out of this 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 quad of games saying, well, DK is definitely 
definitely running up there for a starting spot. And quite frankly, until Sargent um, performs at the club level and starts getting a little more consistency behind him, I'm, I can see DK starting now. When's the last time you saw DK flop like Sargent does? Never. You just don't see him do it. D- and D- DK, DK probably has about 30 pounds of muscle on him compared to Sargent. That's another bonus for DK. He's yeah, a man. I know. He's yeah, a he's grown a, ass He's a big man. guy up there, man. He, he can take those hits, and he's able to bring it down. And again, you know, like I said – so pe- people will bring up because they talk. They talk about how we will die, that we are dying on a hill for Sergeant, and I don't think that's the case. It's more you're more than capable of fluctuating between who should start and who should not. Yep. You're not sticking to a striker. You're not sticking to a winger. You're not sticking to a center back. Who's in form? Who's playing? And right now, DK is showing that he's he should be starting. Yeah, and as you said, it was Costa Rica, so it's hard to say, but it's not DK's Doesn't fault. Doesn't matter. He played well. He still he played well. For the, he showed for the ball better. As I said, he ran the lanes better. Yep. I think he's your guy going forward right now until for somebody now. Yeah. snatches it away from him. And let's hope that uh, PFOC isn't again, too injured. Yeah, and again, similar similar to the Aronson issue that we talked about, having having PFOC, Sargent, and uh, DK fighting for that starting uh, striker position, the center striker position, that's a great problem to have. It's a bonus problem to have, and then Hoppy's going to maybe join the argument down the road. Why not? So then, yeah. you get, then you got four guys basically battling for two spots on G- B- Greg's uh, roster because oh, he's twenty-three. Taking, yeah, yeah. He's not taking more than two. He's taking it's a waste two. of. It's a waste unless, unless he plans to start playing a two-striker uh, formation. It would be pointless to take more than two uh, center strikers. Exactly, and especially since Way can play that spot too. And true, you know, yeah. You can shift him over in an emergency if one guy drops down dead or whatever. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, overall, um, pretty good. I think we could probably give – it's even hard to give Greg a grade on this game because yeah. how I mean, crummy he, he, Costa Rica was. He didn't do anything different. He played no. the same the same formation that we've been playing for ever since Berhalter joined. Yeah, well, except for played, last played, game. Played, true. But he also played. He also just played the players who didn't play. Yeah. So it's not like that he didn't do anything. He just played against the team who was not there. Yeah. And we did get to see almost seventy uh, something minutes of uh, Adams. Mm-hmm. That was great. It was yeah. good to see Adams out there. Sorely missed. Play seventy whatever. Yeah. And and you notice you notice once he got sub, Yule came in, and then Acosta came in for Musa. Our our attack and our presence pushing forward died oh. out, and then yeah. all of a sudden Costa Rica had more possession, more opportunities, and it was just it was just so obvious that our yeah. that our, our lack of depth in that position is just going to hurt us in the end. Hopefully, so, hopefully uh, McKinney, hopefully Adams. Uh, Hopefully, Musa and even hopefully Legit can stay healthy, so that way we're not necessarily reliant on players that are going to drag us down a bit. Yeah, it seems to me if I were Greg, you'll has to. This is it. He had a run here. Mm-hmm. We gave him some looks, and whenever he was in, things just didn't look good. And yeah. I don't know. I'm you not. Know, and uh, I, I I defended Yule, and I still will too. But I defended Yule enough to say, in the sense to say. Despite the fact that we bagged on Acosta enough, I would actually absolutely bring Acosta instead of Yule at this point. Yeah, I think even though Acosta is doesn't have all the technical stuff I like, he busts his balls harder and he's yep. better on defense. Um, whereas he's just Yule, a little more clinical and he's less, you know, less pass backward, or, you know. Right, and Yule is more afraid and young, and yep. he's well, young. He's one year younger than Acosta. I guess. Yeah, you're right. He's not that not that young, but he's just I don't know. There's something that screams. Like inexperience, he's a defensive liability. Um, he never wins one on ones hardly. It seems that ever. Whenever I'm watching, I'm like, "What? He just lost another one. Up, oh, he just lost another one on one ball." Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I'm. I just think it's time to maybe try Keaton Parks or somebody else at that spot because you'll. He just doesn't have it. He's just not. He's a goal. We, cut, you cut know, if we're, if we're going to pull from MLS, let's, let's try from the plethora of other MLS players that are equivalent to Yule, and maybe we can find somebody who's a comparable uh, um, minute player, you know, coming in late at the game just to hold up the play or whatever. Or so. maybe Otisowi 
yeah. kicks ass next year for Wolves. Probably not. But well, I mean, even even if he even if he still just comes in for bit minutes for Wolves, why not give him a look more than what we have already? The only reason I wouldn't not at that position is because whenever Wolves use them, they've been using him like a, a second striker, uh, a pseudo attacker. Never gets to play CDM, and then when they did play him at CDM, they brought him at the end of one of the games. He lost the ball, and uh, the other team scored the winning goal. So it happens when you don't play much. Yeah, put a guy in for the last ten minutes yeah. of a tied game. That's uh, a nineteen-year-old. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no, so, I'd, still, I'd still give him a chance. And hey, you know what? Gold Cup's right on the corner. Why not? I mean, I, but then, you know, you got to cont- consider. And this is going to be the issue with that: is that Burl Holder's going to have to contend with the players who are in Europe. Who would he would like to see in the Gold Cup, but they also have to compete for preseason. It's yeah. gonna be it's gonna be a tough decision for him as a whole. I did want I did want to shout out a player that we normally bag on because he's lackluster as a whole, but uh, Cannon stock rose today. Yeah, I did. It did. He played oh, well. Yeah, he he got he got a little he got a little upset with uh, Musa when Musa didn't play him back the ball. Though I was fine with Musa cutting in taking that shot. Me too. But uh, when he when uh, Cannon's goal was such a phenomenal goal in the sense that he collected the ball, he he recovered from getting a, a, a 50-50 tackle. He faked a shot with his right foot, pulled it into his left, and then slotted it home perfectly. That was perfect for his first goal ever. Yeah, yep. And another shout out to Roy Lassiter, um, whose son played for Costa Rica today. Roy Lassiter mm-hmm. was a, is a U.S. soccer icon from early days and um his son and ended up playing for costa rica and we're used to that being the other way where you know like if we play liberia (laughs) they're going to be like oh crap the president's son is on the other team (laughs) (laughs) so this is one of those different moments when you're hearing the name lassiter i'm thinking oh 80s late 80s early 90s usn us men's national team um, I think that's it for this, uh, Brad. I don't have. Do you have any other points on this one? Uh, not really. Outside of the fact that Robinson was pushing and claiming his stake at left back, um, perhaps mm-hmm. there's no other reason to have Dest at left back if Robinson's healthy. Um, and at, th- at this point, make Dest fight for his right back spot yeah. against the Edlund. Yep. Honestly, and then Cannon made a point today, so maybe he's back in it now. But Dest. After that game versus Mexico, and people have made excuses for him and saying, oh, he had no one to pass to, no one's getting open, and all this other baloney. Well, listen, that's that's a horrible excuse. Mm-hmm. Um, there were plenty of other times when, you know, things didn't go right for him, and it was his fault, not somebody else's fault. And people got to realize that. You have a bad game. And the coach pulls you in the 60th minute and you play for Barcelona, you're not doing something right. So we saw it. Even Greg saw it. Okay. So stop making excuses for Des just because he plays on Barcelona. Derek, do you honestly think you should be spouting out truths and not sugarcoating the fact? You know, I would love to <laughs> sugarcoat it because I love things like Twix and Twinkies, but I can't. <laughs> can't do it. All right, until the next time on the Straight Red Card, come back for part two when we're going to talk about the Aronson Dilemma. See ya.